You can use the calendar in Outlook 2013 to enter appointments and meetings, as well as keep track of other things you need to remember. Appointments are activities that you enter into your calendar that do not involve inviting other people, meetings, or reserving resources. Entering appointments in your calendar is really easy to do. You'll be amazed. First, click on the calendar label to go to the calendar module. Once you're there, click on the Home tab, and then click on the New Appointment in the New Group. The New Appointment window will then open. In the subject line, name the appointment or the subject of the appointment. For example, Get Teeth Cleaned. Enter the location for the appointment in the location line. If you want to show others your availability during this time, click on the appointment tab in the ribbon. In the options group, click on the show as box. And select one of the options from this list. Then enter the date and the start and end time for this appointment. If it lasts all day, check the all day event box. When you're finished, click the save and close button in the ribbon. To make an appointment recurring, which means it happens regularly and not just once, click on the Appointment tab before you save and close the appointment you just entered. Go to the Options group. Click on Recurrence. In this dialog box, you can set the recurrence pattern. Specify if the appointment occurs daily, weekly, monthly or yearly. And you can also specify the days or weeks that it occurs on. In the Range of Recurrence section, specify how long the recurrence will last. You can specify no end date, or you can say that after 10 appointments it won't occur anymore, or you can specify a date. When you're finished, click OK. A label will appear under the location section that describes what the occurrence is. Once you've entered in your appointment information, you can then format the text. Just note that in order to be able to format the text, you must type in the appointment notes. To format the text, Click the Format Text button on the ribbon inside the appointment window. Remember, this is before you save and close the appointment you've entered. You'll then have the same formatting options as you have with emails. You can change the font, the font size, bold face, italics and underline, change the font colour, highlight and use bullet points, indent text, right align, left align, centre and justify, add borders to the text, add styles and much more. We already covered these options earlier in the course, but if you're unfamiliar with these formatting options, take the time to familiarise yourself with them. It will improve your experience using Outlook 2013 and any other Microsoft Office 2013 program. The easiest way to navigate within the calendar to see or find what you need is to view the calendar in the manner that works best for you. In this section, we're going to discuss the various ways you can view the calendar for easier navigation. We'll also teach you how to navigate and be able to find certain dates. The first thing we need you to do is go to the calendar module if you're not there already. Click the home tab and look at the arrange group. This will arrange your view of your calendar to make it easier to navigate. In the arrange group you have the day, work week, week and month views. There's also a schedule view command. These allow you to change how many days are displayed in your calendar. The day view shows one day at a time. Use the back and forward buttons to go to the next day or the previous day. The work week button allows you to display your work week. When you select a view, the calendar tools appointment series may appear. To return back to the view selector, click on the home tab. The week view shows a seven day week. The days shown here, you can select in the backstage view in the calendar options, which we'll cover in a few minutes. The month view shows the current month. The schedule view shows your schedule for the day. It looks a lot like an appointment book. Let's say you want to view your calendar for a day that's still two weeks away. To do that, click on a date in the little calendar in the navigation pane. It's that simple. You can use the backward and forward arrows to navigate through the months to find the date you want to view. Outlook 2013 also allows you to customize the way you view your calendar. You can alter and edit your calendar to tailor it to your needs. You can even change the colours of the calendar to better suit your taste, or perhaps match your company's colours. To do this, go to the File tab, and then click on Options. Click Calendar on the left. In the Work Time section, you can specify your work week. You can also set the first day of the week, the year, and your work hours. This section can be used when you're setting your calendar view. You can select other options for your calendar, and then click the OK button. 
An event is an activity that lasts all day. It does not have a start time or an end time. You can invite other people to events. To enter an event, go to the calendar module if you're not there already. Click on the home tab and look at the new group. Click the down arrow beside new items and select all day event. Fill out the information just as you did with appointments. You can also click on the invite attendees button in the ribbon to invite people to your event, as well as display your status during the event with appointments. When you're finished, click save and close. You can change your view of the calendar to see that your event has been created. Outlook 2013 also lets you add your region's holidays to your calendar. It's also really quick and simple to do. Click on the file tab and then click options. Click calendar to go to calendar options, then look into the calendar options section here. Click the add holidays button. Select your country. You can select more than one if you want. Once Outlook has added the holidays to your calendar, you'll see this message box. Click OK. In Outlook 2013, a meeting is an appointment that includes other people. It can also include resources, such as meeting rooms. When an invited attendee to your meeting responds to your invitation, you'll get a message in your inbox. To schedule a meeting, click on the Home tab in the ribbon in the Calendar module. Then click New Meeting in the new group. Type a description of the meeting in the subject line and a location in the location line. Enter the start and end times. If it's an all day meeting, make sure you check the all day event box. Type any information regarding the meeting in the body or the note area. You can also attach files if you want. Now when you're on the meeting tab, click on the scheduling button in the show group. We're going to make sure the time we've picked for this meeting is the best time for everyone that we want to attend. You don't want someone who needs to be at the meeting to be not available. Click the Add Others button below the All Attendees column. Let's choose the From Address Book in the drop-down option. Now you can select attendees. If someone is required to attend, click the Require button. If it's optional, click Optional. Also, click the Resources button for resources such as a meeting room. Required and optional attendees will appear in the two box on the Meeting tab. Resources will appear in the Location box. Now when you're finished, click OK. Now you can see which attendees are available. Use the legend at the bottom of the window to tell if they are out of office or busy, etc. Some contacts, especially those outside your company, might not be able to display the information you need. It will display as a white with black diagonal lines. When you have the meeting scheduled, click Copy to My Calendar. When this box appears, click Accept the meeting and click OK. When this box appears, click on Select Save Changes and Send the Meeting to let the other attendees know that they have a meeting. Then click OK. To print your calendar, click on the File tab and then click Print. Select the printer you want to use to print your calendar, then select the view that you want to print. You'll see a preview of what it will look like on the right side of the window. When you're ready to print, click the Print button at the top of the centre column. You can also create different calendars for different things. Perhaps you want a work calendar and also a calendar to keep track of your kids' sporting events. To create a calendar, go to the Calendar module. Right-click on My Calendars and select Add Calendar. You can choose to add one from the address book, the room list or from the internet. You can also open a shared calendar if you use Microsoft Exchange. If you created one from a room list, it would list rooms, such as meeting rooms along with the schedule for meetings. If you created one from the internet, you're then asked to enter the URL of the calendar. Let's click From Address Book. You then need to select the contacts from your address book that you want to add to the calendar. Click on the contact and then click on the calendar button. Then click OK. Calendars are created for those contacts. This is handy if you do scheduling for someone. You can create group calendars so that you can keep up to date on your team's schedule or that of your family if you're using Outlook for personal use. To use the group calendar feature, however, you must be using Microsoft Exchange. In this example, we're not using Microsoft Exchange, but we can walk through what you need to do anyway. First, let's hide the calendar that we just created. To create a group calendar is very easy. Go to the calendar module if you're not there already. Click on Calendar Groups under the Home tab and select Create a New Calendar Group. 
Enter a name for this group and click OK. Select the contacts you want to add to the group by clicking on the group members button. When you're finished, click OK. Now you can see your calendar as well as the others in the group. You need a Microsoft Exchange server for the group members calendar to update in your Outlook. If you don't want to see any of the calendars, you can clear the checkbox next to the name of the calendar on the left here. The weather is a new feature in Outlook 2013. By going to the calendar module, you can see the current weather conditions in your area as well as the forecast. The weather app is located at the top of the calendar as you can see here. By default, the weather for New York City is displayed. To change this, click the downward arrow to the right of New York NY and select Add Location. Type your location into the box and press Enter. You'll see a drop-down menu asking you to choose the correct option. We've selected Tampa, Florida. After it's loaded, the weather is displayed in the air.